Today we'll talk about uh, medical school histology basic peripheral nerves. Uh, we'll talk about ganglia, we'll talk about nerves, we'll talk about interaction between the nervous system and other nerve cells or also with the nervous system and muscle cells. There's some questions in through there and a little bit about travels if you enjoy the peripheral nervous system. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about peripheral nerve and you can see various nerve cells here and receptors that are here. So uh, what's the function of nerves? Nerves are specialization, specialized cells for transmission, reception, and integration of electrical signals. So they transmit, they receive, and they integrate signals to uh, coordinate activities of the body. Distinguishing features of nerve is that neurons, which are nerve cell body plus axon, very long excitable cells, excitable cells, and they communicate with other neurons or other target cells by synapses. So you have chemical signals sent from one cell to another one to ignite. Uh, that cell or maybe secrete hormones. Now nerve cells as we see here is very similar to epithelium in that both of them come from the ectoderm is one of the things and here we have a base in the epithelium we have a kind of base uh, in the nerve cell apex and apex. So we have the cell body there's a nucleus dendrites and axons and then a nerve terminals at the end. In the spinal cord, we have neuron cell bodies and then lots of uh, axons coming through there. In various organs, we have ganglia. So this is a dorsal root ganglia, but we do have ganglia in different organs as well. And then the long projections are the, ax are the axons, and most of which are myelinated axons. So here we can see the cell body, uh, and the granularity in the, in the cell is a nissel substance, dendrites for receiving messages, and then the, the axon coming through here, you can see the myelin sheath, and so this is a swan cell, uh, one there, one there, one there, and where they connect is a notarombia right here, and then they come all the way, myelinated all the way to the very end to this, stimulate this particular muscle cell, cell body, axon, and then you got the terminals at the very end. So uh, in this monkey, we see a nerves as well as we see the ganglion cells. So these are the ganglion cells. Here's a single one right here. There's a nucleus, a nucleolus, the nissel substance, the granularity things that we see there is really. Uh, ribosomes could be on refiar, it could be on just free ribosomes, and these smaller cells here are satellite cells. Those are support cells that we see in the peripheral nervous system. So this is a cell body, is the same as this structure right here. Axon, these are myelinated axon that you see through here, here, and this is another view of the ganglion. Here we see the ganglion in a dog, and so uh, here's a cell body, there's a nucleus, a nucleolus, nissel substance is we, what we see there, and it's really aggregates of ribosomes, could be on rough ER, could be just polyribosomes that are located there. But you can see the nucleus is very euchromatic, kind of like a snake eye with a nucleolus that you see there, and a lot of euchromatin. Euchromatin is indicative of a metabolically active cell, and then we see the little satellite cells, which are support cells, periphery. A higher mag of that, we can see the nissel substance very nicely uh, in these various profiles you can see the satellite cells around around them uh, nucleus nucleolus of the ganglion cells and what we're seeing in there the, the roughness is the ribosomes it could be polyribosomes on rough ER or it could be just free ribosome but that's a nissel substance that we see that's making proteins and in tissue this happened to be the uh, the pancreas, we can see a uh, ganglion cells. There's one cell here, another cell right in there. So you can see the nucleus and nucleolus in the cell body, the ganglion cell, the, the satellite cells around it as well. Here we see in the bowel duct, here another one. This is a ganglion cell right there. There's another one, there's a one right there. You can see the nucleolus uh, very nicely in these. So in the various tissues, you get signals coming in and then uh, you have neuron cell bodies, ganglion, that are located in the tissue themselves. Here we see the dorsal root ganglia. We see some nerves coming down through here. That's what these guys are. There's neural, neural cell bodies that we see right in through there of the ganglia and, and the dorsal root. And then these are actually nerves itself going through. So we see the ganglion cells and this little substance that we see. And we can see a fibrous capsule 
around it. These will be fiberglass in through there. These guys here are myelinated axons. You can see where the myelin sheath's kind of been removed with the axon in the middle. Over here, the axon is quite big, and you can see the myelin sheath around it, the swan cell nuclei that is surrounding there, too. If you look uh, right in this region, right up through there, I, you will be able to see a bipolar neurons. So bipolar neurons are ones that have a pole on either side of the nucleus, and that's what we see there in this light in the ear. This is duodenum, and the duodenum we can see muscle layer that we've looked at before, the epithelium on the surface, connective tissue in between, but we're looking to be looking at the nervous tissue now that controls that smooth muscle. There's smooth muscle here, and we see this nerve. This is our box plexus. That's located in the submucosa. We see some sub submucosal glands, and we see circular and longitudinal muscle and the muscularis externa. This goes to here, the gut lumen there. A higher mag of this region right in through here, we see the iron box plexus, right in between the longitudinal and longitudinal and the cross sections. These are cross sections of that circular muscle. You can see individual smooth muscle fibers in through there, but this is the ganglion cells that we see there and the satellite cells uh, supporting it. We look at this, another piece of intestine. We can see the iron box plexus here. This is a single nucleus. Uh, there's a nucleolus and the, the cell body would be right there and that controls our cells. And on the inside, in the submucosa, we have the Meister's plexus, the cell bodies. This is one, two, three cell bodies of the Meister's plexus. And this plexus regulates smooth muscle uh, in the mucosa. Could be in the muscularis mucosa or it could be actually projecting in the lambda propria but that's the one that regulates meisner's versus our box plug if we look at a nerve cell body we can see the big nucleus a euchromatic nucleus you see lots of polyribosomes lots of polyribosomes making the, a substance and these are dendrites dendrites have a lot of intermediate filaments and we can see the host of these filaments in these dendrites and these are axons so these are axons with the vesicles that's going to be a synapsing on the on the dendrites. So we have mitochondria, lots of rough in the plasma reticulum, and this stuff collectively is known as nissel stuff. Now if we look at an axon, axons coming down through there, fairly long structure, and it uh, is encased by several swan cells. Here's a swan cell nucleus that we see, and that uh, swarms, uh, forms a swirl around it, which would myelinate it, and then there's another one, and it's a notarombia is where one swan cell ends and another one begins. And that's what we see right here. We can see the kind of swirl, the uh, plasma membrane of a swan cell so ending here and another one beginning we see microtubules that are in the axon itself so in this cat we can see this is the myelin sheath and these are that gray are the axons that we can see some of them could be quite big as you can see this is the perineurium around the nerve endoneurium would be on the inside and so if we look at the longitudinal view of the nerve as you see there we can see uh, one swan cell and another swan cell has myelinated this axon so we see some fibroblastic cells in through there some of those could be swan cells as well but you see the notarombia is different from the smith Feynman clefts which you run at an angle so this is where the myelin sheath swan cell swirl ends and another one begins along the length of that uh, axon. Here we see in a salivary gland, we can see nerves in the connective tissue. Nerves are kind of wavy, and most of what you see is a swan cell nuclei because the cell bodies are at a different location. Here we can see the nerve. There's a notarombia, another notarombia, another one right there that we can see where one swan cell begins. You can see it again right here and there, and you can see that the, if you have an axon that's myelinated, the swan cell only myelinates one axon. However, if it's not myelinated it can accommodate more than one axon and that's what we see right here if you have a myelin it can myelinate just one axon but if it's just supportive of axons and not really cause a myelin sheet then swan cell can accommodate several axons as we can see here here's a monkey hand you can see this uh, skin and deep underneath the hypodermis you can see connective tissue and lo and behold here's a nerve and you can see these these are swan cell nuclei as we can see perineurium on the outside and the kind of pink in the middle would be the axon so nerve 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 and here we see fibroblasts fibroblast makes up the perineurium fibroblast makes up the capsule the fibroblast makes up perineurium that we see there or just loose fibroblasts that we see nerves and tissue and organs are continued 
we can see there's a nerve, nerve, nerve. Nerves are really kind of wavy, as you can see there. And higher mag, you can see the myelinated axons that are located into there, and also the fibroblast perineurium. If we look at the vessels that are in the spermatic cord, these are larger vessels or arteries or veins that we see. But we can see the gray structure here too, with this one cell. These are myelinated axons, these are nerves, myelinated axons inside there, and the perineurium would be on the outside, the connective tissue on the outside. So we see the perineurium, we see nerve, uh, and each one of these would be a myelinated axon that they see. Uh, if we look at one of those axons, you can see the, the myelin sheath is around the axon, and uh, this is a swan cell that produces that myelin sheath. And then outside of that is the perineurium. And interesting enough, the perineurium fibroblast cells, they make tight junctions between adjacent cells, and that helps maintain the, uh, the blood peripheral nerve barrier is the tight junctions between adjacent fibroblasts. Unusual to occur, but it does occur in nerve. Uh, we saw this before. This is a, a motor end plates where a nerve come in here and innervates various nerves uh, that we see. These are skeletal muscle cells uh, and various nerves. A nerve comes here and interacts with various skeletal muscle cells. So one here, one there, one there, and then we can see the motor end plate. That, that's there. Again, if we look at smooth muscle cells, we can see where there's a synaptic cleft, where the axon it could be synapting. Uh, next to this cleft would be, uh, the synapse would be the transmission of fusion, plasma membrane with these vesicles. We can see some of the vesicles right here, and, and those vesicles would carry the neurotransmitters that would stimulate the uh, smooth muscle to contract. In the tongue, we can see uh, skeletal muscle cells. We can see capillaries in through there, but there's again, there's a muscle spindle, and you can see the interfusal uh, muscle fibers that are located in through there, and the fibroblast capsule around that. That's a muscle spindle or a, a pressure, deep pressure. A receptor. Here we see uh, the proscenium corpuscle, another receptor that is a pressure receptor is too. The muscle spindle is actually a stretch receptor as opposed to a deep pressure a receptor in the, in the uh, proscenium corpuscle. Here we see the hypodermis. Uh, if you look down here, we got the dermal papillae and the epithelial pegs. And so that's what we see in this area. And here we can see right above that would be the proscenium corpuscle. So these are the proscenium corpuscles, which are deep pressure receptor. Now, a light surface receptor that we see, not all, all the way on the surface, but it's close to the surface. You see the dermal papillae projecting up here. This is epithelium, and this is the Meissner's corpuscles. So the Meissner's corpuscle is for the light touch, and they're located in there where the dermal papillae project up in the epithelium. You can see one here, one there, one there, one there, there. All of these are Meissner's corpuscles, or they are light touch receptors. Now, if we want to look at nerve versus connective tissue, we can see the nerve is wavy. So there is the perineurium that we see right there. These are individual cells, uh, swan cells that we see. And then we see the myelinated axon, which makes it kind of white. So that's lighter staining compared to these bundles of collagen. And we also see some fibroblasts in through there, basically the gut bundle of collagen, and this blood vessel here has smooth muscle cells. So you see smooth muscle cells, collagen bundles, and nerve in this view. Here we see fibroblasts. Fibroblast is in the advent tissue of this blood vessel. We see smooth muscle cells as well. We can see fibroblasts in the perineurium that, that we can see, but also we see bundles of collagen. Remember, the fibroblasts produce collagen, which is extracellular. So if we take a look at this spermatic cord again, we can see fibroblasts are located in a different location. Location, smooth muscle and blood vessels. You can see the long, slender muscle with the cytoplasm. That is smooth muscle cells, and uh, and we can see nerve and nerve right here as well. In the spermatic cord, we can see nerve, the perineurium here and here that we can see, and blood vessels as well. So a couple of questions, which is not distinguishing feature of the nervous system. Comprise of central and peripheral nervous system, yes. Individual neurons and clusters of the neuron ganglia are found in most organs, yes. Individual peripheral nerves are found in limited places of the body, no. They're found all over the body. And so the answer is, is B, not distinguishing feature. Okay, and then the yeah, next one is uh, which intraembolagic origin tissue matches? Ectoderm, nerve, yes. 
Endoderm muscle, no, is mesoderm. Mesoderm nerve, no, is ectoderm. So the answer is A. So we want to thank the various uh, books from which uh, diagrams and some of the figures were, were taken. That is the original work. We want to give them a credit for it. Also, Body Worlds uh, for one of the two images. Hi, this is my wife and I. We're at Big Bend National Park. This was Christmas a year ago. Uh, we were at this park. So that ends Medical School Histology Basic, uh, Peripheral Nerves. I hope this is useful. If it was, please uh, consider uh, subscribing to the VIBS Histology YouTube site. Thank you.